Good afternoon, good morning, depending where you are. Uh, Elliot Levine, uh, Chief Academic Officer here at STS Education, and welcome back to part two of HP Week, where we're gonna be looking at Z workstations and their impact on STEM and STEAM learning across your school systems. Uh, we've got a great guest today, an old colleague of mine from HP, Dave Buckley, and I'll be introducing him more in just a minute. And to give you just a quick summary of today and how we're here to help you, uh, I'm joined by the lovely Susan Barnett. Susan will be taking your questions and answers. So if you do have any questions during the course of today's session, we're gonna be talking with Dave. Please put it in the chat window, use the Q&A box, whatever works for you. We're also going to be doing a few polling questions throughout the webinar. If you are here as part of any particular incentives or uh, giveaways that we are doing, uh, we do ask that you do answer those polling questions for each one in order to qualify. And don't forget, if you came yesterday and you're here today, all the more reason you're going to want to come back even tomorrow. Because if you attend all three webinars, excuse me one second, you attend all three webinars, you get into a special raffle to win one of two, one of two, that's right, uh, HP AMD Elite Book 745 laptops. And all you need to do, and I'm gonna put it in the chat window, is visit our event page and you could register right now for that session. And that is going to be tomorrow, October 8th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So for us today, you know, this isn't just about talking technology. It's really talking about STEAM learning in education because this is the opportunity to really encourage independent thinking, real life problem solving skills, collaboration, and most importantly, ignite a passion for creative thinking. And I'm just curious, so we're gonna throw out our first polling question to the audience today. And Dave, hopefully you're interested in this. Um, we're gonna ask you, if you don't mind, what innovative STEAM programs is your institution currently providing? And you can select more than one answer here. So just check as many as that applies. You could be doing engineering programs, um, other medical programs with Project Lead the Way, esports, virtual reality, animation, video production, fine arts. And we'll give it maybe three, four more seconds, and then we're gonna see how you all voted. Okay, and Hina, who's probably on the web version, can't vote, but we appreciate that. All right, let's close it up and see how you all selected. And interestingly enough, you know, um, over a third of you responded that you're doing engineering classes in your schools. Um, one individual indicated you're doing esports. 25% said virtual reality. Half of you are doing video production, animation, and nearly two thirds are doing fine arts programs, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, now, that's what you were doing. Now I'm gonna ask you to put on your wish hats. And this is question number two. If you could offer more STEAM programs, what do you wish you could provide? And let's put that question back out to you all. Okay, just uh, give me a minute here and seem to be having some difficulty locating that one. That's okay. okay. Zoom's Here's a little somewhere. bit of a troublemaker. Uh, yeah, I just uh, don't know why it will not allow me to launch that one, but I'm gonna get it. That's okay. What we could do is in worst case, feel free to put your answers right into the chat window and you can answer multiple. Do you want to do engineering? Would you like to do esports or virtual reality? Oops, sorry. Um, would you like to do video production? Uh, Just feel free go. to, oh, polling is. is ready. Sorry about that. That's okay. And do you see Caitlin responded that VR would be awesome. Okay, they finally came through. Our apologies on that. 
Just take a quick moment and vote on this one as far as what do you wish you could add at your school system. Great, let's see how everybody voted. Well, very similar. A lot of interest, Dave, in both uh, virtual reality learning, more than half, um, esports and engineering, roughly about a third of the attendees. Um, nearly everyone said they want to do more animation video production. So there's a lot of interest across the board. And, you know, before we get into the presentation on the Z workstations, one of the things that we wanted to share is something really unique here at STS Education. And we call it the Innovation Hub. And the idea is, could we leverage the power of an HPZ workstation and give you the flexibility from one CPU to really handle every different aspect of STEM and STEAM learning? So that one configuration is already set. So you've future-proofed your investments for esports, virtual reality. If you want to do Project Lead the Way, um, you want to do coding and game design, fine arts. So it's a real wealth of opportunities. We'll talk about that a little later on in this presentation. But what I really want to bring on is our, tr our guest speaker today. Uh, Dave Buckley is in charge of Z workstations here in North America. Uh, he's uh, the product uh, line manager, and he has been heavily involved in the education vertical. Dave, what is it now, 12, 13 years at least? At least that, Elliot. But uh, it's all been a pleasure. Phenomenal. So I'm going to stop sharing and let you share your slides. And if you have questions along the way while Dave's setting up his slides, feel free. Put your questions right into the Q&A box and we will ask them for you. Okay. Uh, can you hear me okay, Elliot? All right. So um, wanted to talk to you folks a little bit about um, – uh, Z for Education, and to uh, put a little context in, uh, just so you, you know where I'm coming from in this uh, era of pandemic and uh, in Zoom, I actually sit in Fort Collins, Colorado, and that's the, uh, the home of our Workstation Global Business Unit for HP, and of course, our, um, our flagship product for Workstations is branded the Z Workstation. So if you're not as familiar, that, um, that gives you a little bit of context. And in, in terms of, of where we're successful with our Z product, it's been a really interesting uh, journey in that historically, um, we've sold into the di digital media and entertainment space, um, auto manufacturers and uh, airplane manufacturers, uh, all sorts of discrete manufacturers have used our product. And um, interestingly, probably 10 to 12 years ago, um, there was very little use of Z workstations in the uh, K through 12 space. But um, what we found over time is that the use of the, uh, the high performance Z workstations that are being used in the industry to really tackle the toughest jobs are becoming more and more popular in, in education. And our business has just absolutely exploded in terms of, um, uh, of allowing uh, K through 12 students to do pre-engineering work or also to do all sorts of creative uh, digital media and entertainment type of, um, of development on these uh, Z workstations. So it's been a pleasure to get more involved with education. And so, Dave, um, you, you, in particular, you mentioned digital media. And if I remember correctly, HP has got a really impressive partner who is probably the biggest user of Z workstations in the digital media space. Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, we work very closely with DreamWorks. I think that's who Elliot's referring to. And uh, in fact, um, when we began to partner with DreamWorks, they were only able to uh, bring one feature animated film to market um, each year. And um, since we've uh, engaged with them, and this was roughly probably going on uh, eight or 10 years ago now, um, uh, DreamWorks is now able to deliver three full-length feature animated films because of the uh, 
the progress they made in their workflow with our product. So um, we're very popular in, um, in commercial uh, high performance digital media and entertainment. In fact, um, I was on the phone yesterday with uh, a Disney group. Um, you've probably heard of them, um, Marvel. And um, uh, we also have worked with uh, across the entire Disney family, Industrial Light and Magic, and uh, even uh, uh, studios as far away as uh, New Zealand, like where they uh, developed the Lord of the Rings uh, 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 series. So um, enough of that divergence. Um, um, let me just talk briefly about um, uh, STEM and STEAM technologies and how it's uh, just exploding in, um, in K through 12. So I think this is kind of an interesting slide. I won't go through the gory detail, but you can see that, um, especially at the bachelor degree level, that uh, a $20,000 premium for STEAM education uh, type of roles um, is is pretty outstanding. So what you're seeing is a lot of um, motivation in the K through 12 space to uh, develop this. It's only going to continue to grow. So STEM jobs are projected to grow at a rate of about 13%. And um, that hourly wage um, for a STEM job, even you know, in comparison to um, a uh, a typical business job in the um, uh, after a bachelor's degree is pretty impressive at almost forty dollars an hour. So, uh, Elliot, comments on uh, on this slide? Well, you know what jumps out to me right now is the number of students who don't necessarily ultimately even pursue, you know, a technical related career but they find so often that those technical skills kind of come back to whatever field they ultimately go into. So, you know, it, it's one thing we used to pigeonhole STEM uh, learning as something for, you know, geeks and nerds, but so much of the work today for individuals, there are times when they need this level of high performance computing that they don't otherwise have. And probably the closest thing that so many young people have are gaming PCs. It's the first time they really think about a computer processing a large amount of information fairly quickly and conveying it up on a screen. But it's going to happen more and more in their everyday life. Absolutely. Yeah, so it, it makes a lot of sense to um, initiate a focus in, uh, in the STEM space. And of course, the neat thing about um, STEM is there's money out there in, in this day and age, uh, grant money available to implement uh, uh, STEM in your school. And um, if you play your cards properly, you can even um, uh, upgrade the equipment that you purchase for uh, STEM technology education and be able to do some pretty impressive uh, uh, animation, uh, digital video work, and that sort of things that that dovetails nicely with the uh, uh, with the fine arts space, and um, make sure that those uh, high performance computers are being used for the entire school day rather than just a portion. So, um, one quick reference to um, HP's emphasis in the education space. Um, we're going to talk exclusively K through 12 today, but this pretty much covers um, both K through 12 and higher education. So um, in the K through 12 space, our emphasis is on, on STEM and STEAM education. Of course, um, uh, you're all familiar with, um, with the STEM um, based on Elliot's first slide and uh, the A, of course, is for arts. And then um, there's more and more emphasis on um, on the creative pr pros and being able to prepare for even a, uh, uh, a for-profit education at maybe a Vancouver Film School or a Savannah College of Art and Design or an Art Institute. So uh, we're seeing more and more uh, Adobe and Avid being used in the, um, uh, in the K through 12 space. And then um, extended reality, we just had a, um, a school district completely pledge their environment to uh, virtual reality ready systems. In fact, uh, over a thousand systems. So um, virtual reality is only gaining momentum. 
Um, eSports, as, as Elliot mentioned, uh, most of the students are certainly doing this at home, but interestingly, there are, um, there are scholarships at, uh, at top-notch four-year schools available for uh, varsity eSports work. So um, um, that's gonna only continue to grow and then finally, everyone is all about remote learning in this day and age, and we have some um, some great products that focus there. Yep, spot on. I know currently uh, about 10% of secondary schools in the U.S. and about 10% of colleges are running esports programs now, Dave. And I believe the latest count is roughly around 175 colleges are now offering some sort of esports related scholarships, and some of which offer full rides. So who knew? Yeah. As somebody Absolutely who only played uh, Pitfall Harry, I didn't think there was an opportunity for me on my Atari. Yeah. Well, and uh, it, if only uh, I could have gotten a scholarship for my risk skill, uh, that, would have, <laughs> that would have been the path forward for me. Excellent. Uh, all right. So um, uh, I wanted to talk briefly about uh, probably the most popular STEM education curriculum in the K through 12 space and how we're aligned with, um, with Project Lead the Way. And I'm sure a number of you um, are familiar with PLTW. In fact, I saw in the polling that um, I think it was three or four of you had um, Project Lead the Way already implemented. So um, uh, I've been working closely with PLTW for probably the last 10 to 12 years. And um, uh, I've been the, um, or I should say HP has been the exclusive technology sponsor of the uh, Project Lead the Way summits that have, have occurred in um, many of the last several years. And um, um, we're very in tune with what their requirements are. They use a high performance um, application called um, Autodesk Inventor and Autodesk Revit. And uh, this is the same software technology that's being used in industries to design um, discrete products and also to uh, design uh, buildings and so forth. And what's interesting here is um, the evolution of their product requirements for, um, for the curriculum. So um, you can see here that for existing devices, they've um, had a minimum of a, um, a system with a two gigahertz processor, eight gigabytes of memory, and a, uh, a modest 500 gigabyte disk. So um, uh, in order to keep up with the interactive requirements that these applications have, uh, they've certainly bumped that up. You can see the new requirements on the right. And um, uh, we um, work closely with them. You can see their curriculum um, listed there at the bottom. Starts at uh, sixth grade with gateway to technology and moves into engineering um, essentials. And they have also got a focus on biomedical science and computer science. So um, uh, a, uh, a real leader in the education curriculum space. And uh, uh, we make available a lot of interesting hardware to uh, meet their needs at varying levels. Great. And Dave, we actually got a question in about PLTW. Okay. Um, an individual um, was looking, you know, I, ideally they were looking for a way possibly on the website to be able to search for kind of the pre-approved configurations. Um, and, and short of updating the website, is there any way that a district can quickly find that configuration that meets all of those requirements in an easier way? Uh, so the, the answer is that we have what we call smart by SKUs that are available and I don't have those at my fingertips. I, um, uh, I think I can dig up a flyer that identifies those um, particular SKUs. But um, yes, we do have standard build to order SKUs that are specifically for the um, PLTW curriculum. Right, so I guess James, to really answer your question, uh, it may not be just out clear on the website, but if you work either with your HP partner or your HP workstation specialist, they can immediately point you right to a configuration that already meets and exceeds all of those requirements. So there's certainly yeah, a lot available. And uh, a comment for James, I encourage you to think about what else those, um, those systems could be used for because um, you notice the video card specification, a two gigabyte um, video card 
is really pretty basic. But if you've got any aspirations to run the Adobe Creative Suite or to do some, um, uh, some Avid uh, uh, video editing and that sort of thing, you may want to actually bump that up a little bit and, um, and prepare it to, to be able to handle other workloads rather than just the PLTW workload. But thanks for the question, James. Oh, and he was also asking if there were Z books available. S Absolutely, yeah. You can you can either do it um, uh, mobile or you can do it as a uh, as a desk side. I would say that probably eighty percent of PLTW labs are desk side based, but in this era of uh, COVID nineteen, um, you know, it may make sense to um, to consider going the mobile route as well. Well, Dave, let me ask you on that. Um, Screen size, is, does that tend to become a bit of an issue if you're working in Autodesk software and such? Is it a, you know, do you want to go 15 inch? Is that when at least the 17 inch is better? Or that's when you want to start looking at 24 inch desktop displays because of all the intricate work you might be doing? Yeah, so here's what I'd recommend. Um, you know, as you get started with um, the basics of, of Autodesk Inventor or Revit, um, you can get by with a, a modest size screen, you know, a 15 inch uh, laptop. But as you progress through um, the curriculum, what you'll find is you'll be de designing much larger models and um, you'll, you'll need the screen real estate to be able to effectively design that. And you, you'll just find that, that only the mobile screen is kind of limiting. You can certainly dock the mobile to, um, uh, to multiple screens. And um, you know, that might be a path forward, but um, you, you'll certainly want more screen real estate as you progress in the curriculum. Great. Okay, I um, wanted to just highlight one product here that's been very popular in K through 12 education. It's our Z2 Mini. Um, this is a, uh, a really performance packed um, mini form factor. It's about um, probably about six, seven inches uh, square. And uh, it's designed to handle up to the 125 watt 10 core processor. And you can really get some um, impressive graphics performance with um, uh, Quadro 2000 or 3000 graphics that far exceed uh, the project lead the way requirements. And um, uh, I also included a little in the, um, on the right side of the slide there, it's a, um, a security sleeve for the, um, the mini, which has really made this thing popular. It can either be mounted right on the back of a display or it can be mounted underneath a desk. And um, what's so elegantly designed about it is you slide the mini into it and um, the display port and um, uh, keyboard and mouse connections are available to you, but um, you block the standard USB uh, connections so that your students can't um, drop in a USB and and start doing some uh, nefarious things with your uh, with your lab based system. So uh, that's a, a really nice solution for um, uh, for the K through 12 STEM lab space. Oh yeah, and I mean, Dave, what I've seen time and time again, and I was a big fan when the Z2 Mini first came out. You had a lot of schools that you know real estate was a premium. So they had very tight little labs. And because this can mount right on the back of a monitor, it doesn't take up any more room than a very small tight computer lab, but it doesn't mean you don't have to, you don't have to sacrifice performance in that tight space. So it's a great option. Absolutely. And um, uh, an interesting point I'll make here, I mentioned remote access. You can actually set these up in a STEM lab today. And if you've got uh, students who are work working remotely, we have a tool called uh, Z Central Remote Boost. And a license for that comes free with every Z workstation and allows you to, uh, to access from uh, home or, uh, or wherever um, uh, to the, the lab system with a, um, with a really elegant tool to um, uh, to deliver the same graphics performance that you'd have if you were sitting right in front of the machine. So um, that's standard with every uh, HPZ workstation. Great. 
All right, um, and then I want to shift a little bit now to the um, to the XR space. So XR, if you're not familiar with the term, um, implies uh, not only VR uh, for virtual reality, but also AR for augmented reality, where uh, you're you're able to um, observe both the the traditional uh, real world as well as the virtual world. And the whole point of this slide is that um, when it comes to uh, to learning, a virtual reality experience just um, uh, is, is so much superior to standard e-learning in terms of retention that um, uh, it's, um, it's astounding how much more quickly uh, students can internalize things like um, my favorite always is anatomy. You know, if you're rather than uh, dissecting the frog, if you can uh, dissect the frog in the virtual world, um, the retention just goes absolutely through the roof. So, um, Elliot, thoughts? Yeah, I, you know, and I think the big thing here, you look back to Dale's cone of experience. It's one thing to read about something or listen to a lecture, but when you roll up your sleeves and do it, uh, it's the information is being stored in a different part of your memory. And that's why in, in the example you show here, which is, I think, very effective, to try to learn and remember and master content in a traditional lecture-based setting in that model shows about 24 weeks. And a student, after 15 weeks in that instruction supplemented with virtual reality learning, they are at nearly the same level as if they had taken nine additional weeks of training. Pretty astounding. Okay, so the, the key thing about virtual reality, um, in order to implement it effectively, you have to have a system that's capable of delivering the, uh, the minimal latency necessary for a user to use virtual reality um, without getting sick. And that was the problem that, um, that industry had with virtual reality for a number of years. Um, there, were, there were latency issues where the scene wasn't refreshing um, at, at, a, uh, at a refresh rate that the eyes were expecting, and that would cause nausea in the, uh, in the users. And we've made tremendous progress over the last uh, three or four years in um, um, not only delivering the performance necessary, but delivering it at a modest price. So if you're interested in, um, in being able to deliver virtual reality, you need to buy a system that's virtual reality capable or VR ready. And um, we have a whole portfolio of systems here, um, starting with a, uh, on the mobile side, uh, the ZBook 15 and um, and 17, and then on the uh, on the desktop side, uh, you can see that um, the uh, the first VR ready system is a Z2 G5 tower, um, which can support a, a high enough performance graphics card to be able to support uh, low latency virtual reality. And then you get into our um, our more expensive machines there, and in fact. Um, we've also introduced a VR-specific mobile solution called the HP VR Backpack that allows you to, um, uh, uh, to essentially move around in your virtual reality world. So uh, you, um, you set up some, uh, some lighthouses and some controllers for your head mount display, and you're able to um, uh, to walk in about a, uh, a 20 foot square box, if you will, um, to, uh, to physically move around in your virtual world as opposed to just sitting at your desk. Uh, so um, um, that's the type of VR ready hardware that's um, necessary to do the job. And we've also recently introduced um, really the industry's best um, and most uh, uh, economical, if you will, virtual reality headsets. Um, the HP Reverb G2 VR headset is a great solution for um, for K through 12 education. And just this last week, 
we introduced a, uh, a higher end version of that that um, incorporates feedback from, um, from the individual's um, bodily functions in terms of uh, it'll do pupil tracking so they kn that the, um, the system knows where the, uh, the virtual reality user is looking. It'll also track the, um, uh, the user's heart rate. And um, this is critical for, um, for example, in uh, military simulation or law enforcement simulation to be able to understand how the individual is coping with the, um, uh, with the anxiety associated with the, the virtual reality experience that they're having. So that might not be as interesting in the K through 12 space or as affordable, but um, certainly the H for HP Reverb uh, G2 VR headset would make a lot of sense in that space. And you can certainly complement it with a, uh, a high performance display. So a full portfolio of, um, of VR ready solutions and um, just a, a shout out to a, a school district in San Antonio, Texas that um, ended up buying for all of their labs across their entire district. And this was um, well over a thousand systems, all virtual reality ready systems so that um, they were prepared to um, move aggressively into um, virtual reality based education uh, across their curriculums. You know, Dave, you brought up an interesting point because there's a lot of low end VR experiences in the marketplace. These little standalone headsets that are powered by very, very low end units, you know, the sort of thing that would run your cell phone. It's, in fact, some of them use your cell phone. And what I always seem to notice is the refresh rate is what is sacrificed. Absolutely. And, you know, if I recall correctly, if you're not at least at around 90 hertz as far as a refresh rate, you know, that, is that where dizzying and disorientation can start to occur? That's correct, Elliot. So these are really designed you know, not for just, oh, you're putting it on for 60 seconds and play a cute game, but if you are really going to work and learn in a VR environment, this is what it's designed for, not for a quick you know, show and tell. Absolutely. Great. All right. Uh, so just wrapping up here, I wanted to uh, uh, do a quick tip of the hat to our, um, our eSports efforts. So uh, we've just uh, recently introduced a couple of solutions that um, make uh, competitive eSports uh, more possible than ever before. We have a mobile solution called our ZBook Create that incorporates a GeForce RTX 2080 right in the 15-inch um, the uh, thin and light uh, mobile workstation. And then, of course, we have our, um, our entry desktop, the Z2G5, which will also support an RTX 2080. And um, uh, these would be the standard for, um, for being able to do a competitive eSports uh, program. And, of course, these could also be used if, um, if you are implementing a STEM, STEM environment uh, you could use these for the Project Lead the Way curriculum, and you could also easily do um, Adobe Creative Suite work or video editing with um, these types of platforms. So uh, if, um, if you're thinking about um, uh, going in this direction, make sure that you're fully utilizing the, um, uh, the capability of the type of system that you buy. Great. Any so other Elliot, questions? Yeah. Um, that's what I had in terms of the, um, the formal content. I'd, I'd love to hear some questions from these educators and uh, uh, hear what challenges they're confronting and, um, uh, sure. and uh, just dialogue a little bit. Yep. And if you do have questions, everyone, please just feel free to put them in the Q&A window. And as you're doing that, Dave, if you don't mind stop sharing, what I'll kind of get back to is a little bit of the discussion about um, dedicated versus more, um, you know, versatile computing powers. And, you know, when we, we spoke earlier, and, and Dave gave some great examples, it's not just about Project Lead the Way. If you're doing an engineering class one or two periods a day in your school, 
what does that lab do the rest of the time? Is it becoming just for word processing and basic tasks? Or do you want that same lab to be also able to handle virtual reality, esports, uh, could be doing video production and animation and such? That's where we've kind of taken a slightly different approach um, at STS. And we have a solution called iHub, which is powered by the Z workstation. And you know, some of the key differentiators here when we look at this, um, in particular, esports is one of those areas that really throws a wrench into the plan. Because for example, if you look at most commercial uh, monitors, it only has about a 60 Hertz refresh rate on the display. Um, for esports and gaming, you typically want one, 144 Hertz or better. So what we've done here is we're working with that same Z2 small form factor workstation that Dave was kind enough to share with us. But we're working, we're also then leveraging the HP Omen brand um, gaming display so that you do have the refresh rate, as well as the keyboard and mice, all those accessories for gaming purposes. And then we still bring back in the, the reverb headset as part of the solution. So if you want to take this not just from a traditional lab, but make it a VR lab, we'll not only bring in um, the reverb headset, but we'll also introduce Victory XR, which is another one of our partners. And they have built now over 250 different VR experiences. And if anyone has gotten to work on any sort of virtual reality learning experiences so far, it's pretty darn dynamic because everywhere you look in that room, you are immersed in the experience. And there's a hologram of a teacher and she's a real science teacher. Um, she takes you through step by step how to do everything. And if you make mistakes, mistakes happen. So as you see on the screen right now, you have to pin down the frog before you dissect it. And if you forget, your frog is going to go flipping onto the floor and you have to go pick it up. So it's a great way that, you know, not just two or three periods a day, but before school, during school, after school, nights, weekends, one lab like this will become kind of the innovation center of your building. And in fact, it'll be, as you said, with that San Antonio district, it will be kind of the gateway to bringing in much more high performance computing that really challenges a student's creativity, imagination. It really focuses and, and spurs their curiosity. It's not the sort of same thing that happens when you're looking at low end cloud devices when their cell phones have more power than them. So it's a really great experience. So um, not seeing any questions, what I would, oh, we would like to have this. Um, yes, so there was a question if we can get a copy of the recording, we would be happy uh, to do that. We will get you a, a link to that uh, in the next day or so. Um, and at the same time, if you are interested in Z products, if you'd like to learn more about our innovation hub, um, you can reach out to us at STS and we can arrange to get you a demonstration. We can send you a uh, sample equipment to try. And that really brings us to our last polling question of the day. And again, if you are here um, for any of those incentives, we do ask that you kindly vote in order to receive that. But if you're interested in speaking with us, what, you know, what could we do to help you? Do you want to try a VR ready uh, workstation? Um, are you interested in expanding STEM programs? Are you looking at esports? Um, are you interested in learning more specifically about the iHub solution? So we'll just give that another five seconds. Great, and we can close that out. And just as a quick reminder to everybody here about STS, um, you know, education is not merely one of many different verticals that we do here. This is the only thing we do. And personally, I have been involved in education for GASP 27 years now. Don't look a day over 30. So got me at a very young age. Um, but it is what we truly enjoy. 
And in fact, the partnerships we have formed over the last several years, and especially with HP, are ones that we value very highly. And in fact, uh, STS Education is right now HP's fastest growing partner in North America for 2020. And that is something we hold in very high esteem. Just to remind you, coming up this week, so if you joined us today and you were able to come in yesterday, please join us again tomorrow. Um, as I put in the chat window earlier, we're going to continue this conversation and we're going to have a really frank and open, honest discussion with Rick and Dyke from AMD. And we're going to be talking about challenges in education today and really try to address some of the issues, concerns you might be having, as well as give you a little sneak peek into uh, some of the new products that we'll be seeing in 2021. And then later on this month, we will have a presentation from our partners at Prometheum, specifically talking about how remote and hybrid learning has been greatly facilitated in schools that have been leveraging their Promethean technology. So with that, I thank you for your time today. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget here at STS, we are proud of one thing especially. We are very proud to be the aspirin for your ed tech headaches. Make it a great day.